this year. You guys were on the other end of some critical game deciding plays. How does it feel being on the right side of almost every one of those today? Yeah, you got to make your own breaks, and it uh, feels good to answer your question. It's not much better than the alternative. Seven years since Cal's head coach. You've had some big wins, games in which your team has played all three phases pretty well. But I'd be hard pressed to think of a game in which you all three phases played as well with as much at stake and against a team like UCLA. Fair? Yeah, that's a, uh, that's a good question. Um, I don't know if I can compare and contrast you know, some of those other games, but uh, what I do know is the guy, guys played with guts and they competed. And uh, I just got so much respect for the guys in that locker room, the players and the coaches, uh, finishing the season the way that we have. And uh, it, uh, you, know, you have a lot of pride in seeing those guys enjoy that moment because they put so much into it. And it was a month ago, it was tough sledding now. A lot of positivity around the program. So really, really proud of everybody in there. Yeah, after the Oregon game, there was a whole lot of positivity around the California Golden Bears. How were you able to turn that around? Oh, I, I think it just speaks to the character of the guys in the room. Again, the, the players first and foremost, because there's a lot of, you know, in times like that, when things aren't going well, come off a really bad loss, I mean, it's human nature for a lot of folks to seek shelter in the storm. And, uh, you know, I didn't see anybody doing that. We came in and we met and we did walkthroughs and the intensity, mental intensity was there, the physical intensity was there. Uh, we continued to coach them and hold them accountable and uh, work on the things that we felt like we needed to improve in order to win. And they took that and it wasn't a lot of, it wasn't finger pointing and it wasn't woe is me and the guys just played through it. And, um, it's simple in concept, but it's pretty hard to do sometimes. And so I, that's why I got so much respect for all those guys. It's just because they didn't seek shelter. They looked in the mirror, each and every one of them, and said, okay, what do I got to do to help us win? And we found a way to do that to finish out the season. Go to Mia, Dad's Who stood out to you tonight? Oh, man. I mean, there's been a lot of people. I really, I mean, there's just, start with the defense, uh, giving up just a touchdown. Uh, they did have a missed field, but we gave them a touchdown on a short field. And other than that, I mean, I don't know, sacked the quarterback quite a bit, I think. Uh, affected the quarterback, at least. Uh, took the ball away. Uh, you know, Dave Reese, I think, had another big day. Xavier Carlton, Cade, fourth down stop, interception. Special teams, the kickoff return unit. Everybody, I mean, Jaden's an electric player. We know that. Jaden, pretty obvious what he did on the KOR. It's really impressive, but the guy's making the blocks. We're really good at the kickoff team. Uh, Hunter Barth causing a fumble. Michael Luckers getting on it. The field goal kicker, you know, was really good. The punter was really good. Offensively, uh, Jeremiah, Fernando bouncing back from a couple mistakes. Jaden, the run game, you know, it's a really, really good run defense. I mean, elite front. Maybe, maybe the best defensive player in college football, and they ought to. Um, but they kept grinding it out, and, and then the drive to finish late in the game, I don't know how many minutes it was. It was, what, seven or, seven or eight minutes late in the game. So uh, there wasn't one person. That was a uh, team effort through and through. Brian? What was the energy in the locker room, and what was the message to the guy? Oh, man. Uh, feels really good. <clears throat> and I want them to just soak that up. I want them to enjoy that and be with their brothers. And there's just... There's nothing like that. I mean, and that's why I think a lot of us coach, because you can't find that anywhere else, that feeling. And uh, as hard and as gut-wrenching and agonizing as losing is, uh, on the other end of the spectrum, there's just no feeling like that, especially under the circumstances and what was at stake and the way that the guys finished the season. So it was a lot of great energy, a lot of hugs, and I'm – I'm just really proud of those guys, man. Just got a lot of love for the people in that room. It's an impressive group. Steve? Listen, I know for the last few weeks, I and a lot of other people have been asking you kind of the, how the, this affects the last season of Pac-12 regular season football. Well, now regular season yeah. football is over, and the California Golden Bears are going to be the last team to have won a Pac-12 regular season game. How does that, how does that hit you? 
I think this is, should fall into that category of the meeting we're going to have after the season where we can talk through, you know, the end of the Pac-12 for now. Um, I didn't pick the time of the game, to be honest with you. I would have been fine. I think the team, too, if we would have kicked off at, you know, 10 or 11 or noon or 3 or whatever. But they put it at 7.30, and we're glad to play at 7.30 as well. And so, uh, yeah, maybe someday I can put a little more thought into answering that with, with uh, something worthy. But right now, I'm just really happy for our team and the Old Blues and everybody out in the Cal community. Just um, soft sports information. This was James' first kick return. Just what was it thought of at that, that time? Looking back or back? Well, um, we know he's an explosive player. He's uh, shown that <clears throat> in a game like this, um, where we thought maybe there would be fewer possessions potentially, and also, you know, their uh, the strength of their run defense and some of the, the style of play. Uh, we just wanted to find different ways to get him the ball. And so, uh, you know, that's a good start. And he, uh, he's an explosive guy. And I give a lot of credit to our special team staff as well, of, you know, getting that thing schemed up. And then the guys on the return unit, you have to believe in it, and you have to go get your block and keep them covered up. And then when you got a guy back there that can do that, it, it, uh, you know, the, the grease board carrying over to the field looks pretty good. How many times have you practiced that with them? He's practiced back there before, but you know, traditionally he gets, like last week, he got 38 or 40 touches during the game, and we didn't know <clears throat> if we would have those same opportunities today, um, and so we wanted to find maybe another spark on how to create an explosive, and that was the thought process going into the week. Sure. David Reese had three sacks. I think he had three against Washington State, too. That's a lot of production late in the year. Has the light just come on for him, or is he healthier than he was before? Probably a combination of you know, things, but David's got some quick twitch. I remember early in the season, I think I've said this before, he had a he had a rush against Auburn on like a second down, uh, beat the tackle, just beat the guy and sacked the quarterback. And I remember thinking, boy, that, that was a flash. And, uh, yeah, he battled through some things, and, you know, the season kind of, you know, for whatever the reasons were, we weren't quite as productive there getting to the quarterback at the last month. I mean, he had you know, three tonight, three against Wazoo, and I don't know if he you know, had one or two, and probably could add another couple. He, he and I talked about it this week, you know, that he could he could be that guy, you know, to get three. And uh, it was great to see him come out and do it. That was impressive. And the game-changing play, you know, again, he stripped, he sacked, and caused a fumble, and we got a touchdown out of it. Anybody else in the room, man? Coach, um, got the win tonight, but what do the next two weeks look like for this team? Yeah, we're going to fly home, and we're going to get healthy. We're going to study real hard for our uh, finals that are coming. I'm not. They are. Uh, they're going to study real hard for their finals coming up. And uh, we got a lot of really good students. And then we'll get our uh, bowl situation squared away and then get healthy and then put our time in and, and go to work on our opponent in the bowl game. But, uh, There'll be a lot to do, but uh, uh, we're glad to be busy. Anybody else in the room? Okay, we've got Jeff Ferrato on Zoom. Go ahead, Jeff. Dustin, uh, your defense struggled so much for much of this season. You have four games you've allowed 50 points, and yet tonight they did everything you needed them to do. Can you talk about just how they stayed together, how they didn't give up on themselves, and how they turned things around to this degree? Yeah, well, they did a heck of a job tonight. We, we saw that, you know, the run game. Uh, UCLA's got a really good run scheme. Uh, we got to the quarterback. You know, the, the difference between playing really well and not well at all statistically is usually pretty small. There's going to be small little things that show up. And, you know, we never felt like that we just needed to, to remake everything. We just had to do the little things better more often. And um, <clears throat> some of those games, whether it was a, a leveraging coverage or a missed tackle, or maybe we weren't getting the quarterback well enough, um, you know, maybe some of it was field position. We're playing on short fields, and so there's a lot that goes into that. But in the mar the difference, the margins between playing really well and, and not well is very, very small you know, at this level. And so 
continuing to improve and, and again, never giving up on it and can stay in consistent in their approach to the games. Uh, that, to me, is what led them down the road and allowed us to play uh, to that to that level tonight. So, again, really proud of the staff, too, because those guys kept those guys going and kept coaching them and, you know, it was never, um, you know, we would be critical of them, but never demeaning, and, and uh, they take that coaching and, and put it to use. Can you uh, talk about that game that Jake called offensively, and he, he really stuck with the run in your offensive line, made it work in the second half. You were able to hold on to the ball for long stretches. Yeah, again, I go back to that drive late in the game. Uh, I don't know how, how many minutes, but it was like seemed like seven or eight uh, running the ball. We knew we'd have to stay with it. We knew there was going to be some tough yards in there. Not everything was going to be perfect. You're playing against the best rush defense in the country and for a reason. Um, so we knew there would be, be some things, but again, <clears throat> that whole group, Mike Blush and, and Spav and Tim Plow and AT, put together a really good plan and the players going out and believing and executing it. That's what, that's what it takes. And so uh, they stayed with it and we found a way to, to be productive there. Okay, we're going to Thomas Dunn on Zoom and we can wrap up here shortly. Thomas, go ahead. Uh, Justin, all the way back in September, we talked about the special teams and how much inward reflection they would need to have in order to get where they needed to be. Over the course of the season, where have you seen that development from the kickoff coverage unit to the kicking unit as a whole, and how proud of you of the progress they proud of, are you of them for, of the progress with it, that they've made? Yeah, big time progress. I mean, uh, you could look early in the year and we had issues. There's no doubt. You know, the kicking game against uh, Auburn wasn't great. Oregon State kickoff unit was not good. Um, our punter really came into his own about the third or fourth week of the season. He started playing pretty dang well. Um, so we were getting better there. Mateen getting a little more comfortable, you know, playing at this level. And uh, I don't know that we had played a real uh, complete game on special teams um, up to this point, but this one was much, much better, obviously. So uh, really proud of the group. And again, the credit goes to the coaching staff. Um, you know, Vic Soto, Coach Tink, uh, that whole group just uh, keeping us prepared and the players buying in. You know, like I said, it takes the players, you know, the powers and the learner. And so you can sit up in front of the room and talk through kickoff and how we're going to score on KOR this week. And that's what a lot of the staff do. But the powers with the players, they have to take that and believe in it, and they do. So I'll really get proud of the whole unit. And you do, you described the team elation, especially in the locker room. Can you describe your personal in-the-moment elation, especially after getting set up by Jake Spandel for the Gatorade shower? Uh, I think I take the most joy like watching the players and the people, uh, you know, and the look on their eye and, you know, how they're feeling and their emotions, like that brings energy to me. That's where I get the energy from and seeing those other folks. So there's a lot of that right now. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, guys, I think we're wrapped up here. Recording stopped. Bring players in.